Good morning, my single friends. My name is Julia Miller. I am the director and I'm the founder of Citywide Singles. I want to invite you to join me for tea time and prayer as I bring the word of God to you. In fact, I realized I forgot my tea. Hang on a second. Okay, sorry about that. I forgot my tea. So grab a cup of coffee or grab some tea and join me over the next few minutes as we're going to be talking about the power of praise. If you have ever heard me talk about this, there is a book called uh, The Power of Praise by Merrill Carruthers. And he had been a military chaplain, but he has some really good advice. When I very first read this book, it was many, many years ago, and it was just this tiny little book that was like a pocket book, like you would put in your, in your purse. And I would take this book with me when I was traveling, and so it would remind me to praise God in all my circumstances. So when times of trouble came, which we just got done with our series from Psalms 91, I would go back to that little book, and I would remember that there is power in praising God. And so we're going to talk about this. I'm going to take this uh, apart. The other book that I read to you uh, over the past month was a lot of little chapters. This has just a couple of big chapters. <laughs> so I'm going to have to break it apart a little by little. But I want to share with you the first part of what he's talking about. This is going to be part one of the power of praise. And praise is really a choice. So think about when you're having difficult circumstances in your life, when, when a problem arises. I mean, this can happen any day at any moment. Um, you get a phone call and somebody gives you bad news. You go to the, the mailbox and you, you get bad news in the mail. You uh, all of a sudden hear something or see something on TV. I remember the day I was driving down the freeway and I had the radio on and they interrupted the broadcast to say that uh, the, tw the Twin Towers in New York City had been hit by planes, okay? <laughs> all of a sudden, your whole day can change at a moment's notice. And we have to be prepared as to how we're going to choose to um, work through what's coming at us, what we're perceiving is, is influencing us. So what I wanna encourage you is to sit down or maybe get this book, The Power of Praise. It's a very um, small book. It, like I said, it's only about five chapters. When I got it originally, it was just a little handheld book, super easy to read and very practical, lots of, lots of stories in here. And he starts out the book by talking about a story of someone who had come to him that his father, this man was an adult by this point, but his father had been a lifetime alcoholic. And how, you know, now he was married and living with, uh, you know, his new wife, and he would have his parents over. His mom was still married to his father, who was this um, serious alcoholic, and the man refused to even admit that he had an issue and he didn't want to hear about God, he didn't want to hear about anything. And so how this all worked out is they came to Miracle Rethers and told him about this problem and he suggested that they start, they start praising God for exactly their circumstances the way they were. They're like, are you serious? <laughs> and he goes on to talk about it throughout the book different times when he's advised people to do this. You know what, God, just thank God for exactly the way things are. And you know, when you first start to read this, it's almost offensive to your mind. You're thinking, really? I don't know. I don't know how much I can thank God for the situation that's going on in my life. You know, a lot of times we have sickness, disease, we have strained relationships, uh, there's financial things that happen. There's these, these situations that arise, even disasters, natural disasters. We could get stressed out just by watching the news or, or turning on our, our computer and seeing what's going on in our our society and we, we get enraged about the, the things that are happening. But you know what? We always have a choice as to how we're going to respond to things. And he's making a point that we learn to respond to, we learn to respond to, to circumstances exactly the way they're unfolding at that moment. Um, and he goes on to say, and I'm just gonna quote him, this is Merrill Carruthers, he says, we accept, when we accept what is going on, when we accept what's happening as God's perfect plan to reveal his perfect love for us, we, we, when we come into that place of being able to do that, then God is able to move. So I'm just making the point today that making 
a choice as to how we're going to uh, process our circumstances it really ushers in the presence of God. When we express our praise to God, it's really an expression of our acceptance that God is permitting something to happen. And I want to give you the example of Job, because if you remember um, at the beginning of Job, you know, it talks about that Job was this righteous man. He was uh, he was in right standing before God. This is before we even had Jesus. This is in the Old Testament, the book of Job. And Job walked uprightly before God. He, he was in high standing with God. And we see in, in chapter 1 where the angels came before God. Uh, God is sitting on his throne and the angels came in to present themselves. And how Satan kind of snuck in there too. And, you know, God's like, okay, where have you been? Where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> and Satan says, oh, I've been roaming about the earth, you know, looking for, you know, looking about the earth, okay? Remember, God cast uh, Satan to the earth. He was a fallen angel uh, because God cast him out of heaven due to his rebellion. So you have to realize that Satan claims this earth as his territory. So God made a really bold move when he created uh, man, you and I, man and woman, he made he, humankind in his own image and he put us in the same place that he had already cast Satan to. <laughs> Think about that. That's a pretty bold move. Then he said, you know what? I give you my authority to take dominion. <laughs> you don't think Satan wasn't mad about this? <laughs> you know, he claimed it as his own. Hey, wait a minute. You threw me here and this is where I'm at. I run this place. And you know what? Mm-hmm. God had another plan, another uh, another plan. But I want to just point out the story of, of Job here because he we're showing. Uh, I want to show that God allows things to happen. God allows things to be. Uh, he permits things. Uh, so Satan answered God from he that he was roaming through the earth, going back and forth in it. Remember the verse that says that uh, Satan roams about the earth like a roaring lion looking for someone he can devour? Okay, this is an example of this. And then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? I'd be like, thanks God, thanks for pointing me out here. There's no one on earth like him. He is blameless and he's upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. And so here Satan comes in and he says, does Job really fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you put it? Have you not put a hedge of protection around him, his household, and everything he has? In other words, you know, he God put his hand around Job and his family, so you know what? Nothing could touch him. Okay, I like that. I pray that God puts a hedge of protection about me and you. Uh, you have blessed, the. this is Satan talking, you have blessed the work of his hands, he's talking about Job, so that his flocks and his herds are spread throughout the land, but stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you you to your face. Uh, the Lord says to Satan, well, very well then, everything he has is in your hands, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. And Satan then went out from his presence, from the presence of the Lord. So here's the thing, is God didn't strike uh, Job. He didn't do that. I mean, Satan said, why don't you do that? That's not what God did. He just said, okay, you, th you think that, um, that, that Job is going to curse me to my face? He allowed the testing to take place and he had to allow the testing to take place because again Satan claims this as his own and so the legality of the earth is that man would have a free will God when God created us in his image he also gave us a free will to choose to love him to choose how we're going to respond to our circumstances and so say uh, excuse me Job had a choice. Job was about to have a choice as to how he was going to respond when God was not uh, putting his his protective hand around him and everything that he owned. As and as you read this, this chapter one of Job, you'll see where all of a sudden he starts getting all these messages from his servants, where uh, you know everything that he had is being attacked, everything is falling apart, and yet Job still. Uh, you know, he tore his robes, fell before God, and he began praising him, okay? So Job had a, a, he had a choice as to how he was going to respond to, to what was happening in his circumstances. And God permitted this. God permitted the enemy to attack 
Job. Okay, let's just be honest. He, he allowed it to happen. So when we choose to praise God, it choose, we're accepting what God is allowing to happen. He's permitting something to happen. Think about what a permit is. You know, if I wanted to do like major renovations on my house, I, I am having some work done on my house. But if God, if I was going to have major renovations done on my house, like I wanted to add something onto the back end of my house, okay? Even though I own the house, I have to get a permit from the city um, because I'm within the city limits. I have to get a permit uh, allowing me to do that, allowing a contractor to work on my house. So um, it, a permit is something, it, it's not that person doing something, okay? The city's not going to come out and work on my house personally, but they're going to permit uh, work to be done on my house, okay? So this is the same thing. God did not bring... Uh, sickness, disease, uh, disaster upon you or me or uh, our, our cities, our country. That's not the way this works. But the enemy is allowed um, at times to uh, attack us. Uh, it is allowed, difficult circumstances are allowed to come into our life. And God allows those things to happen at certain points in time. And when we choose to praise him, we're saying, God, I accept this. I accept what's going on. In other words, I'm not burying my head in the sand and saying, you know what, this didn't happen. You know what, I just don't accept that. Okay, no, we're choosing to say, God, I acknowledge that this thing is happening, that this disaster, that, um, you know, we're having these attacks on our country. God, I recognize that we've got this anti... Uh, I'm not even not sure if I'm saying that right. Antiva, we have these um, evil things that are attacking us as a people. It's attacking our, our country. It's attacking our culture. God, I, I, I realize that these are things are happening, and I'm going to choose to praise you anyway. God, I'm going to choose to praise you. And you know what? Because we have to trust. It shows that we trust God that he is going to cause all things to work together for our good. And I'm going to talk about that more in the coming days. I don't want to focus on that today. I'm just focusing on the fact of us, through our praise, we're choosing to accept what is happening in our life. So I don't know what's happening in your life today. You know, maybe you've lost your job. Maybe um, you've had to take a cut in pay. Maybe uh, you're having to move and you didn't, you didn't want to move. You know, there's all sorts of things that, that could be happening. Maybe you found out one of your relatives is, is very ill. Whatever it is, we need to choose. This is the operative word. We get to choose to praise him and say, God, I'm going to praise you and I'm thanking you that this situation is, has happened in, in, in my life. God, I choose to thank you. God, I know that you work all things together for the good of those who serve you and have been called according to your purposes. And God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm just going to trust you. God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to praise you. God, I choose to praise you for the situation. Maybe you have somebody that's that's attacking your character. You know what? It's really hard to take a character assassination. <laughs> you know, you would think that since I'm just sharing my little, uh, you know, tea time and prayer with people, <laughs> you know, all I'm doing is sharing with you what I would be doing in my private life because it came to my attention that um, not everybody feels confident in the way that they pray. And you know, it's a process. But here's the thing. <laughs> Sometimes I get nasty messages. I say nasty. I'm sure the person writing it doesn't think it's a nasty message. But you know how people can private message you through Facebook? And you know, you start looking through your stuff and you realize somebody private messaged you who wasn't connected to you on Facebook. <laughs> and they tell you things. You know, about, you know, maybe they don't want, like the way you look, they don't like the way you sound, or I can't hear you, or whatever. They tell you all these crazy things, and you're thinking, <laughs> well, you get up here and do it then. <laughs> okay? I'm not criticizing anybody, but, that, you know, it's kind of like a little arrow that shoots at you. Okay, that's not a full-fledged a character assassination. I have had people who have, I'm sure you have too, uh, attacked your character, just made up just made up lies about you. You know, they'll take little shreds of the truth. They might surround it with a circumstance that was true. Yeah, I was there with her at this and this. And then they, they make up a whole story about this. And you're thinking, what did I do? <laughs> like, what did I do? You know, and we start to argue about it. We start trying to justify ourselves. But here's the thing is forget all that. Forget all that. God, we choose to thank you for this person. I, I, I don't know what's happened. God, I ask that you just help me to walk in love and forgiveness with this person. 
God, I love you. God, I thank you for their life. God, I thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for their life. God, I just release them into their destiny to be the person of God that you've called them to be, cleansed, sanctified, and set apart. And you know what? You see, I have this, this thing that says love here. There's a reason. I have these all over my house. <laughs> because I learned a long time ago that if I am um, battling negative thoughts about someone or something, if I just focus on love, just thank you, God. God, I just cover them in your love. I cover them in your peace. You know what? It's easy to walk in forgiveness when you just picture love, okay? That doesn't mean you're always going to feel love, just like praise. We're not always going to feel like praising God. I, I think David talked about offering up the sacrifice of praise. You know what? Sometimes praising God feels like a sacrifice. But the more we start to thank Him, the more, the more we start to praise Him. You know, think about this. Praise really involves gratitude and joy. So as we start to thank him, and you know what? Sometimes I just have to write it in my journal. God, I thank you for my life the way it is. Maybe this isn't exactly what I bargained for, but God, I thank you. I thank you that I have a roof over my head. I And, mm, you know, maybe I was a little frustrated. I'll be honest with you. I was frustrated when I, I bought this house uh, because it wasn't what, it wasn't my dream house. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> You know, you think when you're spending a lot of money, you're going to get what you, your dream house. But the more, the more I have gone into that place of thanking God and stop complaining, you know, God, I, I thank you and I praise you. God, thank you for giving me this home. I thank you that I have a roof over my head. You know, there were so many reasons that I couldn't see at the time, but I didn't know. I didn't know at the time when I was buying this house that um, my mom was going to move back to the States her house was maybe six minutes from the house I, I purchased, and I was able to spend time with her in the last year of her life. But I didn't know that when I was when God told me to come buy a house over here. I didn't know that when God plunked this house on me. I didn't know that it had some equity in it. I thought it was pretty, you know, good house for the money, but I, I just didn't realize. And so you would think I would know, but I. I wasn't in the frame of mind to purchase, I think, when this all happened. I was just looking to kind of see what was out there. And here you go. And I do this for a living. Anyway, my point here is, is that when we come into a place of, ex of expressing our gratitude, it, it, it's a way of expressing our acceptance of what the Lord is allowing to happen, what God is permitting to happen in our lives. And you know what? Through that process of thanking God through those difficult situations, God is able to reveal, He's able to reveal to you and I His perfect plan, His perfect, His perfect love for us. Because we don't understand what's on the other side of that. God, you know, has an aerial view of what's going on. And even though think about this from a single person's perspective, maybe God tells you to go here and you're thinking, but I don't want to go there but you choose to obey anyway or maybe you just end up there and you think i am i am not happy with this situation and i'm going to be giving you some stories in, in the next few days of how this really worked in my life personally but just for the sake of time if we choose to thank him you know what you might be surprised who you might meet on your journey you might be surprised and it might be it might turn out to be uh, your best friend for life it might turn out to be your soulmate it might turn out to be a business connection that that ushers you into prosperity i don't know i don't know but god knows and god knows that uh, what he's allowing to happen in your life is, is going to work out he's going to work it out for your good even if we can't see it right now so we're just going to praise and thank god and i i'm going to encourage you to get out a journal, get get a get a journal, a notebook of some sort. Uh, I call it a prayer journal. But and write down what is that one thing. Uh, this is your challenge for this week. What is that one thing that is just really uh, been a challenge in your life, an obstacle that you haven't been able to get past, just something that has frustrated you to no end. And I want you to write it down because that's the thing we're going to focus on. I'm going to do it for myself personally. I'm not going to probably tell you what it is that I'm praying over, um, but you write whatever that one thing is. That's all your assignment is, is to get a notebook and to write down that one thing that has just frustrated you to no end. And uh, this is going to be one of those, um, what do you call it? Like a experiment, experiment in faith, because God really 
love showing up on the scene and making himself known to you on a very personal level. He wants to be personal to you. This isn't just about, um, uh, you know, uh, fluffy things and showing up at church. No, God wants to have a personal relationship with you, which means he wants to be involved in the personal, even the smallest aspects of your life. So if you've been estranged from one of your children, if you've had uh, major financial difficulties, if you've had a major sickness, disease uh, happening in your life, whatever it is, whatever that major frustration is, write it down in your notebook and we're going to go on a journey. We're going to go on a personal journey and we're going to have some testimonies to talk about at the end of September. Okay, so um, I'm going to pray for you. Know that God loves you and more importantly, um, he's got a good and awesome plan for your life. So Father God, we thank you and we praise you, God, that you are revealing yourself to us. And God, we choose to accept what's happening in our lives right now, Father God. And we thank you and we praise you, Father God, that you've permitted these things to happen. And even though you haven't brought these things into our life, you allowed them to happen and that you're going to get the glory out of all of this. And so, God, we choose to praise you. We choose to thank you in our circumstances. And we reverence you, Father God, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And I thank you for what you're doing in our lives and for this uh, this journey, this great journey of faith that we're about to embark on. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great day. Love you. Mm.